Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I'm your host, Mark Francis. With it being a busy week, there were plenty of items that normally would have made the podcast that didn't due to the documentary. One story involved a notion that Diana would have moved to America had she lived and possibly been in a movie. Her former butler, Paul Burrell, told CBS News in 2020, I remember she sat out in her sitting room, the plans of a home in Malibu, California, the former home of Julie Andrews, and she said to me, I'm buying this house and buying this house to give William and Harry a new perspective on life. According to Burrell, Diana loved that there was no class system or establishment and told him nobody's judgmental here in America, and he believes she would embrace Meghan and Harry and tell them, do your thing, do what makes you happy. The Mirror reports Prince Harry has held talks with royal pal Tom Bradby over a TV interview to promote Spare, his memoir, out in January as if the privacy-minded Harry needs more attention right now. The Mirror points out the news could cause further friction between the brothers. Both are friends with Bradby, who attended both of their weddings. William chose Bradby for his exclusive engagement interview back in 2010, and it was Bradby who spoke to Meghan and Harry during their tour of Africa in 2019. The New York Daily News dove in on Tom Bauer's book Revenge, Meghan Harry and the War Between the Windsors by writing, It was like a bad fairy tale, the princes and the peeved. Bauer tells the story of a nine-year-old Meghan. At a friend's birthday party, Meghan was videoed sitting on a red blanket wearing a gold crown, directing the other girls to bow and intone to her your royal highness. She had been influenced after watching a tape of Princess Diana's fairy tale wedding. Her father indulged her hunger for attention, paying for acting lessons and ballet class and doing the lighting for her school plays. He paid for college too, $45,000 a year to study drama at Northwestern and helped set her up after graduation with her own place and a used car. He even paid for the gas. He would be amazed years later when Michael gave speeches to working class college students saying she understood their financial struggles. I'm sorry, but that is completely untrue. Her father told the press, I paid every penny of her tuition and I have the bank statements to prove it. She met and wed a young producer. The union, a starter marriage, Bauer Snipes, didn't last, but Markle had already landed a part on Suits. Her profile raised, she began chasing endorsement deals and spokesperson gigs. She also began to distance herself from her father and her past. Friends who tried to stay in touch noticed a change. The tone of her voice, her mannerisms, the way she laughed didn't seem real to me anymore, one said. It was like a light switched off. Then, during a Suits junket in London in the summer of 2016, Markle met a fashion publicist who was a childhood friend of Harry's. Eventually, Harry proposed and she accepted. After the formal announcement, there was a second burst of good publicity in the press. But privately, the family remained wary. Harry's uncle Charles, Diana's brother, told him not to be hasty. Older brother William urged him to get to know the girl. Harry didn't listen. Wedding plans went forward, so did the friction. Palace staffers complained Michael was rude and demanding. Princess Pushy, her half-sister, had already nicknamed her. There were fights over the wedding menu, the music, and the guest list. A conversation with Kate Middleton, Michael's soon-to-be sister-in-law, reportedly ended with Kate's tears as the two argued over the dress Kate's three-year-old was to wear. After that, his grandmother, the Queen, summoned him for a private meeting. The Times reported... He was put firmly in his place. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Royalist caught our attention with the headline, Harry, Excellent Lover, Excellent Bacon Sandwich Schools. Catherine, also known as Cat Amanany, who was one of the stars of the ill-fated Bravo show The Real Housewives of DC, claims to have had a month-long affair with Prince Harry in 2006, when he was 21 and she was 34. It was, she says, the time of my life. Cat says, I doubt I will be in Harry's book as a prince can't run off with a 34-year-old mother of two. It's just not the done thing. Harry was wearing an Australian-style hat that made me laugh, so I asked him, what are you doing looking like a twat in that? I don't think he was used to people taking the mickey, and once he started talking, it was like there was no one else in the room. He was only 21, so a relationship was the furthest thing from my mind. But when everyone started leaving at around 11pm, Harry pointed to one of the three Range Rovers parked outside and said, hop in with me which I found very flattering. We were driven to the Eclipse nightclub in South Kensington and whisked downstairs to the VIP area. A few moments later, the manager came over and asked, What is your favourite song? Harry said, Niles Barkley, crazy. It came on a second later and I said, You are so spoiled. Harry just laughed. Later in the evening, 
Amelie told Harry, I'm starving. Do you make a good bacon sandwich? He said, I make an excellent bacon sandwich. And we went back to his friend's place in Chelsea. True to his word on his bacon sandwich making skills, later Harry lifted me by my waist off the floor and held me against the wall. He gave me the most incredible passionate kiss I've ever had in my life. and I was absolutely speechless. If Harry walked through the door here now, he would probably give me a high five and I'm sure we will meet again because the world is a small place. I hope he is happy and has found some freedom finally because that is something he was desperately searching for back then. I hope Megan looks after him and I don't wish him anything other than happiness and success because he is a very brave, charismatic, incredibly funny, intelligent and lovely human being. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your favorite shows. I'm Mark Francis. My name's John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. And good times. <laughs>